the rear gunner position is <laughs> extremely difficult to get into. You do feel very isolated back here. It's a warm day today, but in fact on missions they had to endure hours of freezing conditions. They needed specially heated flying suits. This was the most dangerous position to be in. Often fighters would target the rear gunner. The average survival time was 40 hours, just five or six missions. Our reporter Simon Ward is in Welby, that's near Melton Mowbray. Good evening, Simon. Good evening. Well, tonight police are still at the cottage as that investigation continues. And it's an incident which has reignited the debate about when it's right or when it's wrong to defend your own property. People in the local community have been shocked by the shooting. An unusual sight in this picture-perfect area of Leicestershire. Well, in the East Midlands, there have been a number of high-profile cases where intruders have been injured or even killed, as Angelina Sochi now reports. In 1988, Ted Newbury was acquitted of shooting a burglar. So that's the background to some other cases here in the East Midlands. We're still waiting for more specific details about this particular case. But there's been no charges so far today, although in a further update this afternoon, magistrates, magistrates gave Leicestershire Police more time to question the people they've arrested. OK, Simon Ward, thank you. And tonight, I'm afraid, there are warnings of a fresh deluge overnight and tomorrow. Well, Simon Ward is in a Leicestershire village where they are preparing for the worst. Good evening, Simon. Good evening. Well, I'm in Sheepy Magna, where, as you can see, it's dry at the moment. In fact, people enjoying an evening pint. But they're all set here at the Black Horse pub. They've got the sandbags ready because it's been a difficult time for some people. In fact, villagers are concerned about more flooding in the next few days. It was a very wet weekend in Sheepy Magna. That's right, yes, rugby's normally played in the cooler months, but this is a rugby summer camp organised by the Leicester Tigers for players aged between 9 and 16. And Harry's here, how are you enjoying it in the heat? Yeah, it's really good, but it gets a lot very tiring when it, obviously because of the heat, so you've got to save yourself to enjoy the camp. Technology is becoming more and more a part of everyday life and no doubt robot and human interaction is something that will be developed further. But perhaps not all teachers are going to look like this. Simon Ward. BBC East Midlands today, Nottingham. I was going to say that. Those with an Asian background were almost twice as likely to be detained on the street. The Equalities and Human Rights Commission was so concerned by the way stop and search powers were being used in Leicestershire that from January 2011 they started monitoring the actions of the police on the streets. That's led to a fall by half of the people who are being stopped. But some say more needs to be done. Well, Simon Ward is in Colville outside one of the care homes that is being sold. Good afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon. Yes, this is Tilson House, one of the care homes that's being sold to South End Care. I can tell you that deal has gone through this morning. But when the Care Quality Commission inspected the same company's homes in Essex, they found failures, particularly amongst staff and management performance. That's something that worries the Liberal Democrats at the County Council. Current people who run the homes in, in South End uh, have got issues with their quality of care, particularly quality of management. With me now is the deputy leader of the council, David Sprayson. Why are you selling off the council care homes to a company that's failing? Well, we want to secure the future of these care homes and make sure they're here for the future, for future residents. Yes, but my uh, question was, why, why sell it to a company that's failing? Well, they're not a failing company. Well, they are, they are according to the Care we, Quality we, Commission. We've, we've seen minor, minor concerns. OK, councillor, thank you very much. Well, the, the company involved, South End Care, say they are making improvements and they'll continue to invest. OK, Simon Ward, thank you. Let's join our reporter, Simon Ward, who's on the bridge over the A453. Good evening, Simon. Good evening, and you can see the lights of commuters going home tonight. And if you've been stuck on this road, you'll know the frustration of drivers and commercial companies held up in traffic. 32,000 cars a day use the A453. And people have been talking about making improvements here since the early 1980s. But finally today, the government confirmed the A453 will be widened. Just a single carriageway in each direction. But this is the vital linking road between the M1 and Nottingham. Well, joining us now is George Coucher from the Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire Chamber of Commerce. Presumably, the region has lost many hundreds of millions of pounds by not having a better road, is that right? This has cost us a lot of money over a long period of time, but we've also lost 
opportunities for investment, particularly in Nottingham City, because the approach to the city has been so poor. Why has it taken so long for the government to listen to you and others? Um, if we had the answer to that, we could, uh, we, we could answer that very well. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us. We still don't know when the dual carriageway will be built. Nottinghamshire County Council hope work could start next year. OK, Simon, thank you. This is Camp Jeroboa in Bavaria, which is being treated in exactly the same way as a frontline base would be in Iraq. I'm also being treated as an embedded journalist, right down to wearing the body armour. Two vans and Iraqi civilians have been spotted. In a war zone, this could be a dangerous situation. Here in Germany, these are actors, but in Iraq, they could potentially be suicide bombers. The British soldiers work with interpreters to find out what's happening. The less shouting, the quicker you'll be on your way, OK? Terry Maxwell from Bradmore in Nottinghamshire was inspired to write this song about the £25 a year charge made by Rushcliffe Borough Council for collecting green waste bins. Nihal loves to dance and she's rehearsing to take part in the Miss India World Competition. Yeah, the judges look for everything, like personality, support, beauty, charity work and confidence. I want to be a role model for people like me, deaf or disabled. Daniel Lambert worked in the city as a keeper of the Bridewell with his father. Bridewells, or Houses of Correction, were originally for homeless people, but later became prisons for a range of minor offenders. So what was he like? Well, historical accounts give us an insight into the personality of Daniel Lambert. He was certainly well-loved in his home city of Leicester, even by the prisoners, because he treated them so well. And in 1803, a prison inspector remarked, he's a humane man, a very improper person, to be the keeper of a prison. It comes to us all in the end, but it's taking longer to get to our last days. The government says one in every four children aged under 16 now will reach their 100th birthday. Simon Ward, East Midlands Today in Nottingham. But first, here's the news, traffic and weather where you are. A very good morning to you. I'm Simon Ward with the BBC News here in the East Midlands. This is Central Tonight with Samina Ali Khan and Simon Ward. Thank you, David, for showing off his legs there. I think his, <laughs> la his lady fans may have wanted him to take his shirt off before he dived in there. No, I think the shorts <laughs> was quite enough, don't you? <laughs> You're watching uh, Central tonight. The time's just coming up to quarter past six and still ahead this evening. The top stories in the East Midlands tonight. Don't suffer in silence. The message from a woman who was nearly killed by her ex-boyfriend. Hello, a very good evening to you. It's an important night in Channel Island politics. Six people are being voted in as Jersey senators. They'll help to take the island's government into a ministerial system, as Guernsey has already done. Well, the polls closed at 8 o'clock. Who did you choose to vote for out of the 15 candidates? Well, tonight we'll bring you all the latest results and explore what they could mean. There's hustling. plenty more on the day's news on East Midlands today here on BBC One at 6.30 this evening. From everybody on the lunchtime team, have a very good afternoon.